overview uh, of Ambit Energy. My name is Eric May. I'm a senior consultant with Ambit Energy. And it is my belief that the information about to be presented will be of great value to many of you on this webinar. Our topic this evening is how the church, the synagogue, the mosque can fulfill God's mission with federally mandated energy deregulation. Now, our presenter this evening developed a has developed a tremendous team of leaders here in Maryland, Virginia, Washington, D.C., Pennsylvania, and really throughout the nation. He knows all the facts about our company, and he knows how this program can benefit you right now. By trade, he is an industrial engineer. He grew up in Baltimore City, and he has promoted to a leadership position within our company that less than 1% have achieved. It is truly my pleasure to introduce our presenter, Executive Consultant Julius Weems. Julius, are you there? I'm here, Eric. How are you doing this evening? Well, Julius, you know it's the greatest day of my life, sir. How about you? I'm doing great. I just want to test a few things. Um, can, can you just let me know if the screen is, um, is full screen, and I want to make sure everybody can see. Um, also, um, David Taylor, I saw you were on the call. If you could text me just to verify that we're technically working, because I want to make sure the information we share is, is very clear. Um, and and it's very important um, to me. This is a special presentation specifically uh, focused on those who are in various types of ministry um, and leaders in the church because uh, so many times things are brought to us and uh, are sometimes not clear or sometimes uh, we just need to be very careful of the things we share in order to protect um, our, our um, members, our flocks, our those who follow us. So I just want to make sure the information is clear. I want to make sure our folks can hear me. And I also have a special guest on that I'm excited to have on as well. So let me just verify that real quick. Um, Eric, are you able to see um, clearly the presentation? Uh, Julius, uh, you're full screen, but I don't see the beginning of the presentation on the desktop just yet. Okay. So you, okay. I, so I see it down reduced, but I don't see it full screen. Okay. And so I'm going to hit pre present to everyone. Okay. And then if you could just bring it up full screen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There you go. That looks great, sir. Okay. And um, just because um, I know you're a presenter, David Taylor, if you're on the line, just send me a text on my phone to verify um, that we are full screen and that audio is good as well. I um, want to do a quick test with my, my guest, Pastor Kenny. Um, if you could unmute yourself just to make sure our, your audio is good, um, unmute your audio for me, that'd be great, just so that I can make sure um, you are here and, and connected as well. I'm here. Test one, two. Uh, all right. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, so, um, and, and thank you. Um, thank you, Pastor Kenny, for, for joining us and um, what I'm going to do is, um, you know, go through some foundation parts of our presentation just so everybody understands how uh, the next 30 minutes will run. I'm going to go through some, some facts, some data, um, but then I want to turn it over to uh, Pastor Kenny Smith, who has uh, just an incredible story of how um, energy deregulation has bless his church and his family and, and, and the members um, of his congregation and, and what options it gave him as a pastor um, and some of the sensitivities as well. And, and I really want to um, have a, uh, I'm going to have a question and answer session at the end so that you can ask questions to all the pastors and, and pastors. And I know we have um, some rabbis and leaders of mosque. I just want to acknowledge all of you and thank you for joining because I know your time is very, very important. And so, um, again, my name is Julius Weems. I'm an executive consultant um, with Ambit Energy. Uh, my background is engineering, um, but I have been, uh, my mother is a pastor, and I have nine 
women pastors in my family have served at the uh, right arm of Pastor J.D. Fowler growing up as his trusted lieutenant and just taking care of many things that came into the church. And so um, I understand the sensitivity as pastors when things come in to your church, you have to be careful. But this evening we want to share an option and um, what I'm going to do even before I kick off, I'd, I'd love to kick off. Pastor Kenny, I'm going to ask that, um, let me just introduce you a little bit, and, and before we kick off, share a little bit of what we're going to see. We're going to go over the affiliate program, but Pastor Kenny Smith, everyone, is um, a top, him and his wife, uh, uh, Sister Terry Smith, are um, in the top 30 leaders in this company. They also um, understand what it means to step out and um, become, as a pastor, become a part of an organization because integrity is so very important. And it's very important that an organization that a pastor will um, partner with uh, is, is doing the right things, uh, really making sure that what they say they're going to do, they, they do, and then that if we can bless people in, in our congregations, um, that's a gift. And, and how do we help the church grow? Especially when it comes to um, finances for the for the church um, to build build the ministry. So, Pastor Kenny Smith, um, I want to thank you for taking the time as a leader um, in ministry, but also a leader in Ambit. I'd love for you to share your story before um, I kick off the presentation this evening. Okay. Well, thank you, Judas. Can you hear me? Okay. We can. Yes. Great. Good. Well, listen. I just wanted to say that I want to thank you for having me on this evening as a um, testimony of what this industry has allowed to happen in the body of Christ. I'm a pastor in Houston, Texas. I pastor Abundant Harvest Worship Center. We're a 14-year-old ministry. And as many know, um, Whenever God gives us a vision, it's a weighty vision. Pastors understand that. Most of these visions that God gives us are way beyond our ability to bring the past by ourselves. It takes people. It takes faith. It takes um, unity. But it also takes income, money. And, um, and I was believing God uh, back in 2007 for a way to bring um, some financial increase into our ministry while benefactoring and benefiting the people of the ministry. I wanted to, we were doing a great stewardship series on how to be a great steward of what God gives us. And uh, during that time, I was introduced to electricity and natural gas, and I heard about a company that was talking about doing things right, talking about integrity and being the most respected company that you'll see in a moment uh, in the in the industry. And those were words that I wanted to hear because I've been through the things with other companies where they promised this and promised that. I didn't want to hurt the members of our of our congregation. Let's fast forward it eight years now. Well, God's blessed us uh, with a million dollars of income from this opportunity. Uh, I was able to give my salary back to my church. Uh, I've been able to help facilitate the vision that God has for us. And residually, we're now receiving a strong six-figure residual because every month people pay their energy bills. What you're going to see in a moment, pastors, is what I saw <clears throat> eight years ago, a way to keep the revenue in our churches. Right now, every one of our members use electricity and they use natural gas. But not one penny of that stays within our congregation. What you're going to see here in a little bit is how to keep a piece of that revenue that can turn into tens of thousands of dollars into your churches as opposed to going to the local incumbent that's been receiving that money um, every single month. So whether it's ComEd or whether it's uh, BG&E or whoever you're with, Pepco, we're going to keep that money in the church and use that same money to fulfill God's vision. So I'll be back at the end of the presentation to kind of go over more of that. But to, to that time, I would thank you for your uh, time in advance and look forward to working with you. 
Back over to you, Julius. Thank you, Pastor. So, so what I'm going to do is go right into the presentation, and what you're going to hear about, uh, I'm going to share with you a little bit about the company, uh, this industry that is going on um, in front in front of our face, and it's going to be going on uh, with or without us, and our members are engaged, um, and how do we allow that to then feed the ministries and the uh, required things in the in the church um, and then the in the product as well as the opportunity for the the um, church to increase um, its um, influx of revenue to be able to do programs for the community so the company and the mission and vision pastor Kenny talked about was to become the finest and most respected retail energy provider in America Jerry Thompson jr. the gentleman on the right hand side um, his family started uh, the largest convenience store chain in the world. We know it today as 7-Eleven, um, and he understood um, franchise-like growth. It's um, a lot like when um, churches um, want to plant multiple churches. I, you know, I actually was a part of a church that planted churches all over the country, and each one had a system that they wanted to follow. So when you look at a franchise-type model operationally, Many organizations, including churches, operationally uh, need a system, and he understands how to build those types of systems. Chris Chamless was a part of the uh, network marketing industry with telecommunications, with Excel Communications. In 2006, they got together to form Ambit Energy. With their high growth experience, created a Fortune 500 executive team. And what's happened over the last eight years, and Pastor Kenny talked about it. It's it's changed a lot of people's lives, but but the company's integrity has shown in the awards and recognition. Uh, best places to work in Texas, uh, the fastest growing company in North Texas. They are the twelfth largest direct seller uh, worldwide of all direct selling companies. Um, but you'll see shortly why that's important. Um, featured in Success From Home magazine, uh, so excited. Um, I've had the opportunity, me and Pastor Kenny have had the opportunity to be featured on the cover and inside, Pastor Kenny is currently featured inside the magazine and his story because of his incredible success of helping so many people um, with his company. In 2010, the company was named the number one fastest growing privately held company in America. Uh, just to give some um, reference, uh, Inc. 500, um, you know, recognized us as the fastest growing company in America alongside companies such as Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and some companies you may know. That's the level of success that Ambit has had. So what is this industry? Um, you know, when I first looked at this business four years ago, um, here's the thing is that I understood one thing. I understood that all my life I had paid an electricity bill. And I only had one company that I could pay for that bill. I didn't really have an option. Um, if you're in the Maryland, D.C., Virginia area, you know that over the years we've had a 72% increase, but we didn't have an option. But now energy monopoly, the federal government are breaking up monopolies and allowing customers to have the right to choose. And what I say is this, and I, I was talking to um, – a pastor the other day and I said look you know your the congregation is paying this bill every month and um, after doing some due diligence the um, uh, the electric bill is the number one um, bill that people come to the church to ask for support with the second is the rent or the mortgage and so in talking to the pastor he says look if we can help the congregation with this I'd like to have a discussion and that's the discussion we're having this evening um, and the timing is perfect why is timing timing is important in every area of our life and the current market size for Ambit is 65 billion dollars our potential customers today is 49.6 million with a current market share of less than 3 percent the orange states are where Ambit is today you see a strong presence on the East Coast um, California Texas Illinois the rest of the United States will become deregulated and that is just based on legislation and state there are currently about 26 states in some form of deregulation but over the years this whole map will be orange 
and where Ambit is. So how does this work for you as pastors um, um, and for every person in the United States, the 360 million Americans that pay for electricity, uh, there was one company that owned the generation, the delivery, and the retailing. And to give you a point of reference, um, it would be similar to when telecom deregulation happened and there was one company that actually owned the lines, delivered the service, and sold, and sold you the service. And, and that was deregulated many 15, 20 years ago. But now what deregul federal deregulation with electricity and natural gas said was, look, the delivery needs to stay the same. We don't want to rip up the lines at your house. We don't want to uh, have a new company come in service. So the del delivery stays with the incumbent provider. But the generation, the retailing is now competed so that the consumer can pay less on a bill that they're going to pay for the rest of their life. And so our service, um, it, it, you know, we say it's the perfect product, but it's the perfect service because everyone uses it. And we all you know, none of us think about electricity unless it's not working. And your your members don't think about electricity unless it's not working. And um, there's no cost to switch, and there's nothing that changes for the customer. And our what we're doing is lowering the cost on something they're going to pay for the rest of their life. And then for, for business owners, no inventories, no deliveries, and no collections. So impressive savings and benefits in our markets, people, our customers save between 3 and 30% depending on the market. Um, satisfaction is guaranteed. We have a green e-certified product available. Each customer gets a welcome gift for welcoming Ambit into their home. That's a two-night, three-day stay at one of 26 of our resort partners. That's not a timeshare. So every customer of Ambit that they don't pay anything to be a customer will get a gift from Ambit um, for, for becoming an Ambit customer and they get monthly travel rewards points for every kilowatt they use and every therm they use they will get a, a point to book travel similar to how we have on our credit cards when we swipe that card um, they they actually give us points to, to, to purchase things but here's the thing we're not spend asking our members to spend extra money. This is a bill that they're paying already, and it's going to offer. We're going to offer some value to them, but the real value proposition, the real value to to, to bless people, in Ambit comes with this program. I will tell you, uh, when I first joined this company, I realized how many lives we could change with just this part of Ambit's program. And here, here's what I understand: is that Ambit is going to allow every customer to get a free website. So when they sign up as a customer, they have a website so they can check their travel rewards points. When they refer five customers, if I'm saving money, I'm going to share with you who I care about just because I want them to save money as well. And it's going to give them another five night, six day vacation package for referring five customers. And by just adding another 10 customers, Ambit Energy is going to give them free energy credit up to and including free energy. And what that means is when someone, ref when, I, when someone, a customer who didn't have to pay anything, refers 15 customers, Ambit is going to take the average of those 15 customers' bill and put it on their bill every month. Okay, so I want to be very clear. That. So every member in your congregation becomes a customer. What they're going to do is they're, they're going to refer 15 people so they can earn a free energy credit. So if someone can earn, if, if the average of the 15 people they referred, if the average of their bills is $200, they will see a credit on their bill every single month for $200. If somebody, if somebody's bill is $250 and they get a credit for $200, they're only going to pay $50 that month. And that's going to help a whole lot of people, but also it allows um, members the ability now to feed into the church, church more because they're able to save money. But what does it mean for the affiliate? And one of the things we're excited about for any organization, so just to, to, to close out that part of the presentation, um, so for a customer, there, there is not, no cost for the customer to be an Ambit customer. Then at, when they become a customer, they begin to save money with Ambit. And if they refer customers, they can earn free energy um, into their home. But what does this mean 
for you as a as a church, synagogue, mosque, organization. Um, our affiliate program is uh, gives the ability for you and your members who are already paying an electric bill. Okay, because so we're not talking about asking anybody to do anything that's new. We're asking them to upgrade their service to Ambit and pay the same electricity bill they paid before, but now that revenue that's been going to the energy company can now come directly into the church and the organization. And so who is this program for? It's for schools, faith-based organizations, sports teams, civic organizations, um, homeowners associations, and so on. But what are we offering? We're offering uh, great savings on their energy bill, and the revenue stream then comes into the church, okay? Um, the benefits of the program, uh, commissions, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, we have, uh, you'll have internet tools so you can track every customer that is actually helping feed into um, the, the congregation. And then uh, we'll have materials for you to share with your congregation on how the program, and we'll talk about that, how to how to manage and oversee this program because it's not going to be a lot different um, than um, when you have other programs. For example, at my church we called it the Community Energy Program because we were raising money to help repave the, a parking lot. Um, and so we utilize this program specifically for that. Some have used it for co um, computer labs, some for schools within your churches. Um, um, here's a copy of the brochure that, that will come to the affiliate. All these things are sort of provided already, so there is nothing new that you have to do, but it is a program similar to other programs that you may have run in your church. The church will, uh, or organization will get a custom website where customers will be able to sign up and enroll automatically, and then it's credited to the organization. Um, here's a sample of what the website would look like, um, and it would have the organization's name, and um, also commissions would be deposited directly to the organization. And then um, there's an online sign-up process. The, the cost is $99 one time, no annual fee, um, and the service can be um, begin being offered. But what does it look like? What does the revenue look like for an organization? I just want to really break this down um, to both a, uh, uh, both a small level of how it's grown and then what could it mean? What's the potential of the program? So, so um, and Ambit pays on Van. So, so every customer, um, every person in your congregation, no matter whether they live in a small apartment or they live in a large single family home, uh, Ambit is going to pay your, your church, your organization, um, you know, between uh, two dollars and nine dollars um, on every home every month, and so you look at the third um, level. Let's walk it out. So for six levels up, what that means just uh, the per the affiliate sponsor who sponsored the affiliate. It shows that their what their residual is, but then it shows the partner is going to get between two on the third level through two and nine dollars per month per home based on how much electricity that, and gas that they use. So you're going to get paid every every month on the amount of energy and natural gas that they use. And so let's just run a simple model. So let's just say um, you have 100 members in your congregation. And uh, those 100 members live in, um, let's use the middle town, let's say they live in a, a town home. Uh, let's say it's a band three. Let's say band three. You see, band three is five dollars. So you have a hundred members in your organization, and they um, all decide to join the affiliate uh, program. And uh, that affiliate program um, would then be offer five hundred dollars per month every month as everyone pays their bill, their electric bill, you know, normally they wouldn't pay their electric bill to the, ch to the church or organization. They pay it just like they did yesterday. But the, the church would get a check every month for $500. Now, let's just say that those um, 100 people decide that they want to earn free electricity. They say, well, look, I want to earn free electricity, so I'm going to go out and get 15 
um, I'm going to go get 15 new customers, right? So those 100 people decided, so let's say 50 of them decide that they want to get free uh, electricity, and they go out and get an additional 15 customers each. That's uh, another 750 uh, customers. So now we're looking at about 1,250 customers in the affiliate, and if they're all, let's say, band fives, so you're getting five, I'm sorry, band three, so you're getting five dollars a month per household, that's over six thousand two hundred and fifty dollars every month into the church organization for people doing what they're already going to do. We're not talking about modifying something. We're not talking about selling um, dinners. We're not talking about selling pizzas. We're not talking about uh, other other monies coming out of their pocket to help the church and the organization grow. We're saying continue to do what you're already doing, get the same electricity you're already getting, and allow it to then benefit the growth um, and the expansion of the ministry. And that is what this program is, is, is really made for. I want to, um, as those, um, you know, and, and as we look at the program, one of the things we find is that, you know, by, by really allowing the members to go and get free energy for their own homes, it is also helping the, them benefit the ministry and and so before I move on, uh, Pastor Kenny, I'd love for you to chime in. I know you have some stories around this and how uh, this program has has, has um, blessed your organization, but also talk a little bit about um, as a pastor what made you decide. You know, the affiliate program was one thing that really fed into the organization, but what made you as a pastor decide to kind of go the other path and also. Um, make the decision to get involved with the business as well, which has allowed you to give your uh, your your salary back to your church, and and you've made over a million dollars with this business. So, so I'd love for the pastors to hear from a pastor on why you made some of the decisions uh, that you made. I'm glad to uh, uh, chime in here, uh, Julius. What made me make the decision is that I've always believed that. With our prayers, God Himself will give us an answer. Um, the answer may come the way we like for it to come, or maybe not the way we like for it to come. But I believe that God hears and answers prayer. And uh, at the time that I was uh, introduced to Ambit Energy, I was looking desperately for uh, a answer to Father: How can we fulfill the vision? We needed many things. We needed. Uh, uh, staff. We needed uh, uh, faithful staff. We needed musicians. We needed all the things that we did not have. And the answer to most of those things was actually um, money, being able to put people on, on payroll, uh, being able to make sure that uh, more than the light bill was paid at our church. And so I also teach uh, an empowerment message as well on empowering the people and stewardship. And so stewardship being making good decisions on your energy bill is a good place to start. How can you pay less for something that you have to pay for? Uh, I would have done the same thing had it been how can you pay less for your home? How can you pay less for your car? How can you uh, get more back on your taxes? I believe those are all good things that pastors should share if you're going to empower your congregation to be good stewards of what God has for them. But also, how can you get paid on your own electricity and natural gas? To me, it was a part of the ministry. When I saw this, it just ringed different to me than juices, lotions, and potions, and pills, and vitamins. I didn't see the same thing. I, I, I didn't see Julius uh, something that could harm the congregation. Uh, if they were saving money, surely they would do well. And I can tell you, eight years later, there's been nothing but excitement among the congregation, among our church, the growth, seeing the new speakers coming in, seeing the new uh, keyboards and, and, the, and, the, and the mics and the speakers and and just being able to just really bless people. Uh, you mentioned earlier, Julius, how the number one uh, uh, benevolence is asked for uh, in our, at least where I'm from in Texas, and I'm sure it's across the board. Is pastor, can you help? Do you help people pay their light bill? And the reason it's light bill is because that's getting ready to get turned off tomorrow. 
uh, maybe even the next day. And many times companies can't extend that, but for so long. And then somebody's going to be in the cold. Somebody's going to be in the dark. Before Ambit Energy, I'll tell you this. Sadly, I had to tell the people, no, we really can't help you. And the reason was we couldn't help ourselves. You know, I, I teach about the, uh, the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan had at least the ability. They had at least the money to help. Uh, we wanted to help, but we didn't have any extra resources. But I'm proud to say now that when people come to our churches asking for uh, help on their lights, one thing we can do immediately is get them over to another provider or get them uh, onto another plan. Uh, and then also we can also share with them, yes, we absolutely can help. Pastor Kenny, I think we might have lost you. Can, can you hear us? So what I want to do as Pastor Kenny is getting back um, on the line, uh, I want to open up for a couple of questions. because I'm sure there are some um, uh, questions. So in our, in our chat room on the chat board on the right-hand side, um, of your screen, there's a window for you to send questions over. I know we've also gotten a few texts, text messages as well um, with questions. Um, so um, I wanted to see, Eric, did you get a few questions over as well um, that we can answer? Well, uh, yes, Julius. And um, what I'd like to do, I had uh, one question uh, come in because I believe you spoke about it on another seminar, and this question came over. Um, you started a program at your church when you introduced um, uh, this to them, uh, and it was called an, an Adopt a Senior. Can you explain how that program works? Yes, yes. So, so there's a few different programs. Thanks, Eric, for for reminding me of that. So, so in many situations, um, I have uh, worked with my church to adopt a family. We adopt families for the holidays. We adopt families. Um, around Christmas and Thanksgiving, we we also give to seniors um, to help seniors as well. Um, but the thing is, that is a one-time gift. That's a you know we adopt a family for the holidays. A whole full congregation will feed into that families or that senior's life. Um, well, we we thought about this, and, and with Ambit, we started a community uh, adopt a senior program where. Um, the congregation would assign the senior up as an AMBIT customer. Then we would go get 15 customers to help that senior get free energy every single month. So think about that. So you have a senior on a fixed income that you, let's just say that the, the 15 customers that we were able to get, the average savings was $100. That's $1,200 a year that senior now gets to keep for critical needs um, such as medication and, and food and things of that nature. So um, a powerful program um, that really um, helped me realize that AMBIT allows us to do some things that we have not been able to do in the past. And so um, so, so really excited about that. Um, and Oh, so great question that just came through. I just got a question through. Um, who do you speak with in the church? The pastor, the deacons, the mother of the church, um, the church board. Many times um, when um, we are sharing with churches, there's a process. Um, the pastor will typically have um, his armor bearer um, talk to us or a deacon, and then we'll sit down with the um, trustee board or the finance board and explain to them how the process would work. Um, one of the things that we do, because remember, um, you know, and another, I know Pastor Kenny would want to talk about this. I'm going to see if he can get back on. But one of the things that's a reality in the church, and I know this, um, working so closely with pastors um, as their trusted lieutenant, um, many pastors don't have a retirement plan. And what we suggest is that the pastor become the consultant and we then sign the church as an affiliate under the pastor. That does not mean the pastor is going around pitching ambit. That is not what we want. 
But many times we recommend when we're talking to the deacon board, when we talk to the um, uh, treasury board, let's bless our pastor. Um, and we're talking about the same level of effort. We're not talking about a new, a different offering. We're not talking about what we're saying is that let's bless the pastor by allowing him to be the consultant and then putting the church under him as an affiliate. So now we're the church is getting a check every month. Our, our members are now getting free electricity, and then our pastor is being blessed with a love offering um, every month because of uh, because members are paying their bills. And so, typically, I would say um, the, for the question, I would definitely reach out to uh, the pastor, the deacon, uh, those who make the financial decisions for the church. But many times, the pastor will have to sign off um, on the program on how the program is run. Uh, and then also I got a question saying, will this webinar be available for future use? Um, actually, while this is um, being shared right now, um, it's also being recorded. So we will get the recording of this um, back out to everyone who registered. If you registered, we will send an email right after with a link so that you could actually replay this as well. Julius, I have another question that came in. Uh, are you able to reach out to the community at large and ask them if they can uh, help the church with its uh, energy program and make a donation by uh, signing their energy bills up under the church, like uh, uh, businesses and so forth? Well, that, that's, that's a great question. Um, one of the things that I recommend is that you set this up as a community energy program, okay? Because, you know, we're able to save someone on their electric bill and they can earn free energy, okay? So let's say you just have 50 members in your church. One of the things I recommend is that as, you know, if you, if you have an outreach program to your community, um, um, having the information to help people understand energy deregulation, one, because they're, they're, let's be honest, there are companies that are doing this right there are companies that aren't doing this right. So what we do is do an information sheet so they understand how to make the decision to switch to a provider, which can be found at your Public, commission, um, public Service Commission website. And then we show them an option where they can earn free energy with Ambit and save money because they also would be helping their own home and let them know they will be feeding back into the church. And it's not just coming to a church festival and buying some goods, but they're going to be feeding back into their local church. And the church will be helping them get educated on energy deregulation as well. Um, I got another question that came in. Um, does the, this work if the church has a sponsored daycare or school division or ministry. I think it works even better if they um, if they have um, an actual school. So my church has a school. I think it's even better for the school. So if the church ha is an affiliate, the school can be an affiliate uh, because many times we're sending home pizza brochures and we're sending home, you know, buy these uh, these uh, candles in the school or or daycare to raise money. And what I suggest is, is that use this as a fundraising program for a daycare or school that's maybe a part of the church or a ministry in the church um, because, remember, as that ministry, school, daycare signs up customers, they're gonna, there's going to be a residual return um, every month coming in, and the members of that ministry can say, hey, look, we want to support – uh, the men's ministry, so all the men are going to sign up as cust you know, customers um, to help this program. And the church would be able to run reports. They could actually see the home. So there's no extra reporting. That's all tracked for you as well. Um, I, I, I see another question here. So does the pastor get to sign up people also to be promoted? Um, if, the pastor, if the pastor becomes a consultant and... I mean, this is how, I, and I will tell you, I presented to a church that had multiple pastors and also had a um, group of deacons that were going to support the program. What we did was we did, um, you know, put the pastor in the business and we put the other pastors under the, the head pastor. And then we put the affiliate underneath. So, yes, the pastor um, as a consultant who then signed the church as an affiliate 
can um, promote through the business just like any other consultant. Many times what I just do though is I say the pastor shouldn't be the one sharing the program. I, I, I trust that his, his um, armor bearer um, should be the one really sharing um, sharing um, Ambit and getting questions answered and if it rolls into a, a ministry we work with that ministry so they can answer questions but many times I understand how you know pastors um, I, I believe that pastors need to to maintain their role as the head the, the visionary for the church and so many times um, I've seen them pulled in. I think what happens is, is that the best way to do it is for the pastor to say, here's a list of folks that we want to talk to. And then his trusted lieutenant will then, or deacon, or whoever that person is, will then help the, build the program and build the business um, for the pastor. And, and it's, a, it's a blessing to the pastor because um, the truth, we don't talk about it, is that many pastors don't have that retirement plan and that that backup plan, and this is a way for the church to feed and really help that pa help their pastor, which I know many congregations want to do. Um, another question came in. Uh, my my church has a charter school. Are the schools um uh, are the schools public um available to to do this also? Also, is there a size limitation for the church or the school? There is no size limitation. Um. You know, um, the organization, it could be 10 people or it can be 2,000 people. Um, what I would suggest is that if you have a charter school, um, do the affiliate through the charter school and then do the affiliate through the church. And here's what I mean it is the church, the charter school funds, or you can just do one big affiliate, um, but you can... Um, if you want to be able to separate and run reports on the fund for the church and the fund for the school, I would set them up as two separate affiliates so their websites are different, and then you'll be able to see the actual revenue that comes into both. Um, and so that's definitely an option. And then, um, but uh, you know, so so and there's so no size limitation. There's no cutoff time. Uh, as the school signs up customers, those customers will then um, feed into the school. But one of the things that I love about schools is that we're telling parents now that, hey, we don't need you to go sell 50 million pizzas. What we're saying is uh, we want you to go help. It doesn't cost anything. If each child in your school, let's just say you have 100 kids in your school, um, each child went off, you know, you rewarded the, the parents that got the most customers, and, you, you know, they have the different rewards for the kids who bring in the most customers. Imagine, um, you know, I've seen kids sell hundreds of dollars in pizzas, but imagine if each child went and got five customers, that's over 500 customers, plus the, the kids in the, in the school, 500 customers at $5, that's $2,500 a month coming back into the school every month off of one fundraiser, and you can run it every year um, as you add on. And so, and so imagine over a four-year span for a school who runs this twice a year, um, or even a church that runs it two to three times a year. As a This is our community outreach program, and you're, and you're gathering hundreds of thousands of customers, and now you're seeing five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000 a month, and you're not going to ask people to draw extra money out of their homes. I mean, that's, a, that's the part I get so excited about um, so many times. One more question has come in. What if I have multiple churches? Do you have to purchase multiple affiliate packages? You do not have, if you have multiple churches, if you've had churches that have planted uh, my church has planted locations in Anderson, Indiana. Uh, they've planted in uh, they're in Columbia. They're also in Baltimore. Uh, but I, you know, it depends on how financially that's a, that's going to be a church or organization decision on how they want to run it. If all the if if they want to manage it as one program and then just uh, one website for all locations, that's fine. And then their accounting organization can determine how they um, divide up the fund. So, so so multiple locations, if there's one head church, like the headquarters, the main church, and you're running through that, you can do that. But then it's totally up to the organization how they want to deal with budgets and funding and, and residual dollars that come in every single month. So great questions. I'm, I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited about doing this for pastors and those in ministry um, because I think that we, we don't have enough discussions like this and, and the fact that we're not talking about we're not talking about people spending money on lotion 
or, or juices or vitamins. We're talking about people paying a bill that they're going to pay already, and they're going to pay it to somebody. This, these funds are going somewhere. That's the part that I want to make sure is very clear. These funds are going somewhere. Why shouldn't they come into the homes of our congregation and into our into our churches? And and so I just want to make sure that we all understand this is happening. Um, and so why shouldn't we support our members to save money on it and then be able to feed some of the, the, the things in ministry that are important to us as, as um, leaders of our flock? So um, I want to thank everybody for joining. Um, this has been a really special, um, this is one of my first times doing this, and, and the more and more we have had pastors join us, I mean, I, I know that I've seen, seen some of our pastors that are in the business get on, and I'm really excited you are on, um, and uh, thank you for joining us, and, and thank you for taking the time, because I know how busy your schedules are, um, and I want to thank you for joining us. We will send this out. Pastor Smith, I see you on, and Pastor Newberry, and um, I just want to thank all of you who have joined us, and we will do this again. Uh, we will get it scheduled. Um, it will be for pastors and those in ministry, and we, so we can have some of those discussions that we need to have in making these kind of decisions. If you have any additional questions, um, the person that invited you can get in touch with me, and we can definitely have a deeper conversation um, and get Pastor Kenny on as well um, if that is needed. Please do not hesitate to do that. And um, I want to thank you all. Have a blessed, blessed evening. And um, if you're in the Maryland, D.C. or Virginia area, um, I want to welcome you to um, join us um, every Thursday night. Um, we do a, a complete presentation um, at the Spring Hill Suites in the Arundel Mills area. That's um, at 7544 Teague Road um, in Hanover, Maryland. That's the Spring Hill Suites of Arundel Mills. Um, we are there at 7.30 every Thursday night. Um, if you want to come and sit down and um, see the presentation a little bit closer and then maybe have a cup of coffee after, I'm more than happy to do that with you. Have a blessed night, everybody, and we will talk to you see soon. And um, best wishes with all of you as leaders in your congregation that you can bless more people, and I hope this program will be able to help you do that. Have a good night, everybody.